Hey everyone, I'm Nanesso. Welcome back to another one-to-one -one chat. I'm still in England, this time sitting down chatting with Brett Moran, the transformation guru. Today we're going to be talking about Brett's story and his feature in the new film Choice Point. So thanks Brett for joining me and having me on. More than welcome, it's been a pleasure. It's been a good few days. Yeah, I know it sounds kind of mundane and redundant, but it feels like we've done this yes, before. Yes, we've known each other for years. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> and we've done many interviews. <laughs> so, uh, Brett, choice point. It's kind of what brought us together, what connected us originally. Um, this is a film that you've taken part of. You're sharing your story um, of your choice point. Uh, a few things come to my mind when I hear that word in the title. What does that mean to you, choice point? Okay, choice point for me was a decision, a choice that I made to better my life, um, to take a quest, an odyssey, to truly transform it and to become a better person, a better person in the world, you know, individually, um, I really wanted to, you know, be in control of my own life and globally, you know, I wanted to be a better person in the world, I wanted to make a difference, um, that, was my, that was my choice point. The Choice Point movie is about how we can all individually make better choices um, and then globally and collectively come together and you know tune into this big pocket of amazing choices and make the world a better place and a, and a beautiful place. World peace. Yes, world peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. So, um, you have After a... world domination. <laughs> <laughs> that comes first. Yes. <laughs> uh, I promise it'll be peaceful domination. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, you have a real interesting story. I know I've gotten to know you personally over uh, the past week or so. And um, you've written about it in your book and also shared a bit about it in the film. Um, what is your um, origination of your transformation or um, the beginning stages that led you up to your choice point? Mm, okay. Um, yes, I suppose a real long story short. Um, drugs, crime, prison, um, you know, prostitution. Um, I was absolutely, completely, 110% living off of my path. I was so far away from the truth with depression, with suicidal thoughts, with a negative mindset, um, you know, self-hatred, this low self-worth for myself, that my choice point came out of a desperate need, it came out of a situation where I had to transform. But at the time, I never knew that. I never knew what a choice point was. I never knew what transformation was. I just took a vow to myself and to something that I believe is higher to really put the effort into becoming a better person, to transforming my life and to changing. You know, I just wanted to stop taking drugs. I wanted to stop living that life. I knew that I wasn't destined for that lifestyle, although I was destined to be that person, but I knew that I had a bigger purpose. I knew that I was destined for a better life. And I believe everyone has got a purpose. We've all got, you know, different destinations, you know. Um, so I just made that choice point without really consciously thinking or understanding what I was doing. I just went on a whim. Um, yeah. And I just went for it, and um, yeah, in ten years I've not stopped that whim. You know, just going for it and going for it. And once you start to notice the deep change and the small change, it becomes you know it becomes more real than anything. So all I've wanted really is to to live the truth, to live that honest path, to be yeah. me, to find who I was. That was my choice point. Yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful. It took me ten years, um, <laughs> but it was a long path before the ten years. So yeah. leading up to it, you had. A real interesting life, to say the least. Um, how did you get your humble beginnings, as it were, into the the world of drugs, drug sex, and rock and roll? Yeah, drug sex and rock and roll sounds yeah, it sounds yeah. pretty cool when you say it like that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, in the beginning, you know, there was a lot of positive effects, positive consequences from drug sex and rock and roll. I was a young teenager, and in my circle of friends and the area I lived in, um, the drugs were just normal. But it was just a way of life. It was a part of life, so you could go to work, or you could be a drug dealer, or, um, you could take drugs, or you could drink a beer in a pub. You know, there was there was no law in our in our mindset. We didn't really care about the police or about criminal records or anything like that. And so at the beginning, taking drugs was just a normal way of life. And you know, I'm not advocating take drugs or not take drugs. That's not my message. So when I did take drugs in the beginning, I felt high. I felt positive. I felt all this amazing love. I felt this spirit, and I felt brilliant it felt good you know um but then addiction took over you know and i kind of went down that destructive path and that's when i noticed that the, the drugs weren't so good how old were you when you say you were you became addicted to drugs when i come kind of addicted probably sort of in my you know the peak of where most young boys should be 16 17 i started smoking cigarettes was my first one you know my family were i, I drink you know we go to a house party there's always drink we go and watch the fish go and watch the football or go on holiday there'd always be drink around and i was the kind of kid that always nicked a little beer 
you know, off yeah. the side or something, you know, we, most kids probably do it. Um, and I was the kind of guy that sort of, you know, my friends were smoking a cigarette and under peer pressure I took a cigarette. But it, it kind of progressed rapidly. Within a few months it was cannabis and then it was ecstasy and pills. So it was like sort of 13, 14, around that kind of age. So you started selling at 13, 14? Or probably, you started doing no, probably about 15, 16. You know, I just left school, kind of, well, I got kicked out of school. Uh, yeah, I got kicked out of school. Um, I wasn't really into education, you know, couldn't, found it difficult to sit still in a classroom to learn. And yeah. And started yeah, working on building sites for silly money and just noticed that I could probably make just as much money as selling cannabis and puff to my friends than I could in one day working on a building site. And again, it wasn't a conscious choice or a decision, it was just something I fell into. It was a pattern that was already set in place, which is still in place, you know, and I just tuned into it and went down that path. So there was no effort needed to veer yourself into the path of drugs, selling drugs, doing them, and the things that were going on in the community that you grew up in. It was sort of the norm. 100% the environment that I lived in just reflected back that, that way of life for me. Like down the road was a drug dealer, up the road was a drug dealer, and across the road was heroin addicts. It was just, it was just normal. It was a citizen of circumstance. I yeah, guess. yeah, like it. Yeah, yeah, totally. It was just absolutely normal. Yeah. Mm. Cool. Um, so, you did that for, for a little bit and you had a, a, a patch of, you know, going into prison. You went, you went to jail, obviously. Um, everything, I guess, took its toll. And that was, what was that like for you? That was a moment, you know, that was pivotal. I mean, I can't imagine what it's like if someone put me in a cell. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> now that I'm overseas, that's kind of like a little kind of fear yeah, that I have, right? Like, what, if, what if it happens? Um, I don't know what I would do. I don't know what I would do if someone um, put me against my will into a prison, especially, like, I feel like you've had this energy about you your whole life, you know what I mean, regardless of, of where it came from and what you did. Um, what was it like initially, kind of, when you went in? Did you go in and just start transforming right away? Or was it a couple of nights in, months? What, what was it? I mean, when I first went in, there's all the fear, the ego, you know, took over, all that kind of, the stories that you see in Hollywood, you know, I thought prison was going to be this you know, real kind of scary place, basically. Mm. And so I had to become somebody else that I wasn't, you know, living a drug addict, obviously that wasn't Brett. Like you say, that wasn't the energy that was already there. So that was just a mask that I was wearing for, yeah. you know, for the hole in the soul that I had. So the illusions that I was addicted to weren't really the problem. Um, what, I, what, the, what the problem I was faced was the stuff that was inside that was missing. I just had to find that. And when I went back into prison, or when I went into prison, I had to put another mask on. So it was, I still coming away from my truth. And it was just... Scary place to be in, and yeah, I'm I'm kind of like you. I don't like to be locked in a room. I like to be out, especially with nature and being in harmony with the trees. And I love all that. So to be locked in a room um, and to have the door shut behind you, and you literally couldn't even couldn't even walk to a shop or something, was a crazy place. But it was the biggest gift. It was like a, I said to you the other day. It was a catalyst for my transformation. I never really had anywhere to face myself. And when you're locked in a room and no big as this 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 place we're in now, this room we're in now. There's only one person in that room, and that's yourself. And I suppose, you know, I needed to face myself head on. Yeah. Um, you know, the usual stories of different kind of people. But I found two things in prison, drugs, heroin, and spirituality, my connection. So it wasn't a bad place. It was, it was an amazing transformation for me, really. Yeah, there's pool tables, there's, tele <laughs> there's tellies. It's like yeah. a summer camp, to be honest with you. I mean, if you want to look at like, the structure and the systems that are in place, I would say they've got it wrong, <laughs> but not everybody decides to transform. So when did you make the point to start living? Like you said, you've been doing it for almost a decade. That's a long time to be moving progressively towards constant transformations of, you know, the evolution of who you know yourself to be. Yeah. You're becoming that person. What was it? Um, what was it that happened that catalyzed that? Was it as soon as you got out of jail? Did you start playing a different deck of cards? You know, yeah. were you... Singing like a different song. Yeah, no, I um, found a book in prison, believe it or not. And, oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, called Moment by Moment. And it was just a book on mindfulness, a bit of spirituality and awareness. And coming from my background, the drug dealer on the street who was like a scaffolder, like a builder. Uh, my dad was uh, a football hooligan who was racist. He wasn't into cuddling and telling me. My mum was a typical kind of housewife, you know. Mm -hmm. We never had no religious concept in, uh, in my household. We never spoke about energy. We never spoke about spirituality. You know, and to find this book, it felt like I was absolutely going crazy. I felt like I was losing the plot. But it was the biggest gift. And I went back to my cell, and there was a guy in my cell, my cellmate. And I didn't even show him the book. I didn't want no one to think that I was going crazy, because I thought I was losing it. You know, 
So I read the book, and yeah, yeah I made, I decided again another choice point. I with, I don't know if I subconsciously tuned into this or you know it was just an act that I randomly did. I put my hands together and I prayed for guidance. I prayed for help. You know, I was desperate, so I begged for it. Mm -hmm. And um, from that day, something changed. I never woke up in the Himalayas or in Thailand or with the Dalai Lama. Something just ignited within me, and I suppose it's, since then, millions of choice points have been coming, and I've been kind of, you know, conscious of them and making more and more. But after that prison sentence and that prayer and that book, I went back to prison again. You know, my drug intake got a lot more. I ended up going to Thailand and sleeping and abusing, you know, women and myself a lot more. Um, but I was always in conflict. So I believe my guru, my, my energy, my guide, whatever you want to call it, was um, it was calling me in conflict. So through mm -hmm. fear, it was telling me not to do it, but I'd always do it. You know, I had a long lesson to learn. So in them 10 years, it's been a journey of coming back to that truth, back to that energy, and just finding it and connecting with it and yeah, trusting in it. That's really important to, to say that, where you go back and forth, so to speak, because that's what a lot of us do. We go into our shadow, we come out of our shadow. We go into ourselves, we come out of ourselves. You know, um, along my path too, I've read many books, I've gone to many places and, you know, um, had these awakenings, but I didn't always bring it back to my life and apply it practically at that moment that I brought it back. It took a while to settle, you know, yeah, what I mean? like yeah. you read this book, you have these, um, you know, thoughtful, mindful experiences within yourself in prison. But when you went out, it, it more or less, I guess you can say, like stirred shit up. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it would do. Um, so that experience, did that put more cards on the table for you? Did that bring up more that you were purging or did it um, just send you on a ride? Especially sent me on a really, yeah, really amazing ride. But and then at times it was a, a destructive ride, you know, because when I come off the path and I knew that I should be applying something that I, you know that I knew, like you know, mindfulness meditation or whatever it was, um, and when I didn't apply it and I, you know, screwed up, so to speak, it kind of killed me inside. It really, you know, and I analysed it and I was beating myself up and I really wanted, I wanted this what I am now. I really wanted it. So when I wasn't living the path and when I was in conflict, it was hurting me so much more. You know, I suppose over 10 years, it's not been a journey of you know love and happiness and peace, it's just been a battle for the first few years to, to keep bringing myself back onto it. And then I, what I believe, I suppose as well, looking back at it now, is sometimes some of the information that I've got, I just wasn't ready for the information. You know, if I had the info, if I got interviewed for Choice Point now, the film now, 10 years ago, you know, I wouldn't have been a very good candidate for mm -hmm. it. You know, for, so for 10 years later, after really applying everything that I've learned personally, because transformation is a personal journey, what you believe in is what different to what I believe in and what to anyone else is believing in. So I just kind of got my own um, my, my, my own tools, I suppose. Yeah. And I took everything and everything on, took it with a pinch of salt and um, transformed my own system. So I started to believe in what I wanted to believe in as opposed to a whole concept. You know, I, liked, I liked some of it and it was amazing. Um, and when I didn't apply it, you know, I thought, well, I think it's the Buddha says, you know, don't believe in what I say, just go out and try it. You know, right. have a go, you know, see if it works. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, try something else. Yeah. So I just kept on trying and kept, and I still do now, you know, I still, I do lots of things now. You know, I still do some stuff now because that's a journey that I will always be on for the rest of my life, mm -hmm. which is amazing. Yeah. And life is a journey. Yeah, right? it's amazing. Yeah, you feel excited just talking about it, I get a bit. You can yeah. feel it, you know. I mean, the choices and the stuff that I have now are not going into prison and taking drugs and not sleeping no. with women for money. Their choices that still better me, but in a different way. They're not as harsh as they used to be. You have that empathy also it carries on in the work you do now. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the, the book you, you've written and the story you've shared in, uh, in Choice Point. So when you talk about you know, the application of the concepts and you had to go out there and you had to do it for yourself, you had to experience it yourself. If we interviewed you, um, you know, 10 years ago, right now, or if you did the Choice Point film 10 years ago, it wouldn't be the same. It was the journey that sort of led you to, to this person you are now. Integration of what we learned and what we're learning is, is real important. That reboot phase where you just gotta rest and recoup. Yeah. Because a lot of people will go out there, they'll quest, they'll read the books, they'll watch the videos, they'll go to the lectures, and they'll go to the gurus, or they'll go to the spiritualists, and they'll go for answers to, to these teachers for answers, and you know they'll want everything at once. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. They'll want to be that person they're going to be in five, ten, two, whatever amount of years. Um, but it's really important, and as you're sharing with your story and through the work you're doing now, is that you've really got to reboot. You've got to accept where you're at, mm -hmm. and 
figure out why you're where you're at and then that brings you to the choice point of okay now I can apply the the bigger picture or the moral of the story and and move forward so would you say that that's you know similar or resonance with your story yeah yeah totally I mean to 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 live your purpose I think you need to define define your purpose mm -hmm. so 10 years ago being in prison or, or, or give or take you know being in prison wasn't about um, becoming who I am now mm -hmm. that wasn't my goal that wasn't my quest that wasn't my vision you know um, my vision, my my only goal is to be a better person, to stop taking drugs, to stop lying, cheating, robbing people, being dishonest. You know, being dishonest absolutely killed me. I hate it. You know, I can't even tell little white lies or little fibs. You know, I can't stand anything dishonest. It's just something that I'm I set myself out to be. So, so where I am now, you know, after all the training, after all the courses, after listening to all the gurus, um, that yeah, where I am now was my purpose. But I needed to define it back then. So I had to work out why I become a drug addict which for me was a hole in the soul. I wasn't cuddled as a child, you know, that love, that connection, very simple stuff. Um, so I looked um, for recognition externally, drugs, women, clothes, partying, you name it, yeah. you know. Um, and then I had to define who I really was. You know, I wasn't a crackhead, I wasn't a bad person, I was just quite lost, you know, and that spiritual connection and the connection within me helped me to kind of love myself. Mm -hmm. You know, it's as simple as that to, to, to be myself and to be comfortable with myself and to be comfortable if, if I was negative, it was okay. If I was positive, it was great. If I was angry, it was, uh, they're all opportunities for me to look at myself. And as you introduced me as a transformation guru, what I want to put across to people is that I'm nobody's guru. Mm -hmm. I am by far not anybody else's guru. The only guru that I am is Brett, my guru, you know, so I listen to myself now and thanks to the Buddha, you know, every time I don't listen yeah. to myself, you know, I mess up big time. Every time I do listen to myself, wow, the opportunities come thick and fast. Once I get out of, you know, the way, I call it the guru zone, you know, you get out of the mind, out of the motives, out of your ego identity this story you know and you go kind of past that mm -hmm. and you get into that so you get past I suppose a fantasy and you become you know purposeful and you connect to your guru and so I suppose my message is to tell everybody to do the courses read the books apply everything and everything you know really go for it step it up but listen to your guru you know your, your guru listen to yourself totally that voice inside you know because every voice is a lot of people's voices, I suppose, even friends and family that I connect with now, I can tell what their their voice is like inside by the lifestyles that they live in, by the way that they look, by you know the choices that they make. You know that critical negativity that pops up. You know yeah. you can kind of it reflects, it comes out in people's lives. So my voice in my head now is beautiful. It's got a lovely tone. You know we talk to each other in front of the singing, mirror, it's singing is like rah rah. Yeah, very airy fairy, but it works. And sometimes I'm still human. The guru disappears, and I have an off day. But they're not off days like smoking crack or sleeping with people for money and wanting to jump off from balconies and kill myself. Yeah, save that for the weekend. Yeah, save it. Yeah, yeah. It's just <laughs> coming back to you. Kind of coming back to your guru. And I'm not anyone's guru, so go out and do the courses. Go out and do that. But go in. Mm -hmm. You know, go in more because the external stuff is amazing. But the, the important work for me, and this is only my journey, is it's inside. The only real thing I know is my inner universe, that's that's as real as this, as you, yeah. as this, as that. It's, there's the whole kind of system that I needed to recreate, belief system, mindset, etc. So you've reset yourself? Completely rewired it, I like yeah. to call it. Rewired. I used to have a yeah, matrix mind with my past business, and it was rewiring the, the conditioning, the society's pressure, the beliefs that you've got, you know, constantly rewiring that whole matrix within your mind, you know, and finding or creating a new one. And now, obviously, I've come to the Transformation Guru where I've realised that that, matrix is just completely nothing it's it's the energy inside us it's who we truly are so would you say that despite your situations or your circumstance that you actually can create your own reality 100 percent, yeah 110 percent. i believe you know scientists spiritualists you know it's in the it's in the shrines it's in the doctrine you know whatever we want to call it it's all in the messages that have been coming on that we are the creators of our own universe you know and collectively if we come together we create an amazing place choice point you mm -hmm. know we can make these amazing choices so i believe that anybody has a multiple of different kind of um, future realities you know mm -hmm. the, and i call it like quantum leaping and all that stuff you know when you visualize and you go into that reality yeah. and i don't believe you then you know i haven't i haven't set myself to be in a film and write a book i had these goals but in the end my destiny pulled me towards that quantum reality towards that path you were so, aligning with yeah, it. Yeah, so I aligned with my purpose. You know, I defined my purpose and I you know, I had to match up to it. So I couldn't um, take drugs on the weekend, but then during the week, you know, be humble and all that. But, you know, because I was lying to myself. You know, I had to live the truth, live by the sword and all that. I had to really set, match up and set to that purpose. And then it pulled me towards it. So you can transform your destiny and you can tap into 
to that future you that you said earlier that we're born to succeed to be happy to be loved to, to connect we're all born for that it's just a natural I believe that's a natural state mm. that we're born with and then along the way we get lost thanks to parents peers conditioning friends mm. but when we come back to that then we, we then we set ourselves up for what we're truly here destined to, to do oh again that sounds beautiful that sounds amazing yeah. right it's beautiful yeah but what would you say to someone who is going through those situations what would you say to someone who uh is in a circle and cycle of drug abuse uh, addiction yeah, dealing yeah. um whatever it is these things pe people can be addicted to their thoughts let's just say these lower density negative um vibrations vibrations yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the space where people are what would you say to someone there speaking from being you know who you are in your story yeah I mean, yeah, you, you, you see a lot of people on TV, you see a lot of gurus and famous people, you know, celebrities, etc., that are, are telling their story. So I don't want to be one of these people that are sitting here kind of preaching or telling people, you know, because I have been on the longest journey of my life. These yeah. 10 years I've been plain sailing, you know, I've messed up more times than I've succeeded. Mm -hmm. But that was part of the process. It was just, just mess up as many times as you can until you find yourself. You know, failure is not a failure, it's an opportunity of growth, it's an opportunity to find yourself. Every time I did screw up big time, it was like, wow, what can I now learn? You know, what can I now get from that to do it next time differently? Mm -hmm. and drink driving, for one, you know, the amount of times I've been arrested for drink driving, I was in prison for drink driving, you'd think I would have got the message after like the third time. That's a very serious thing. Yeah, but it's a really serious thing, it's really dangerous, you know, it could have hurt a lot of people, and luckily, thankfully, that I never, but you'd think I'd have, have learned that message, you know, the first few times, but it took me a long journey to, to really get that message. And each time was an opportunity to make a new choice point, to make a new option, to, to decide. But then I had to follow that through, and that was a difficult part. So if you was at home and you was listening and you're not living who you truly are, I'd find who you truly are first of all, to try and find that purpose. Find, you know, if you're a drug dealer and you're not enjoying it, you kind of, you'll, you'll know. If you're taking drugs and it's making you feel low nine times out of ten times, you'll know if that high is just for a few moments. So I would say look within, you know, literally close your eyes, mm -hmm. connect to what I call your inner guru, ask yourself who you are, why you're in that situation, what choices have you made? You know, my life never gone until I took full responsibility for it. I blamed, I kicked, I screamed, even God or spirit or angels, whatever we want to call it, you know, they were against me, uh, my family screwed me up, my friends were no good. And then uh, the more and more I created that energy, the more and more I was just... Oh, Bill was out. Yeah, it's the police's fault, you know, I'm a criminal, I should be allowed to sell drugs. You know, every time I blame someone else, it wasn't, it wasn't doing me any favours. So it sounds like you were saying that if you could offer something to someone, you know, your, your journey has been long. It's, you know, been mm -hmm. out like a decade of this, you know, constant transformation and, and choices leading you to who you are and beyond. It sounds as though the best thing you would be able to do for someone is almost like be there or condole or just be you know what I mean this yeah, is just me because yeah. there is no um, a lot of people want some sort of tangible some sort of pal palatable um, quick technique fix. yeah or technique. quick fix yeah, yeah. Oh, quick fix <laughs> yeah, <in> French <laughs> oh, yeah it's a quick fix yeah? <laughs> yeah. something that they can use right now that will take them into um, you know the end result right now but again it takes everything's a journey so it almost sounds to me like uh, you know it, it sounds the same thing when we call out for higher guidance yeah. our angels our yeah. spirit or our, our spirit guides higher self um and you know it's almost like they would take that perspective too right they would yeah. just say well look it's such a journey yeah. you have so much to experience along this journey embrace. but if you yeah. embrace and you empower your inner guru your inner knowing i promise you that by following that it will change. It will shift. Your reality will get better. Yeah. But you need to know when you get to that choice point, where to go. Yeah. What choice to make. To so make, it really yeah. comes down to the, the choices we make stitch our reality. Yeah, yeah totally. Sense. Yeah, no, I mean, you think you summed it up nicely. Yeah, 100%. The choices that we make on, we're making millions of choices every day. Some are as big as changing your life. Um, leaving your job, getting a new partner, some as small as what's for dinner, you know, but each choice gives us a consequence, good, bad, you know, like each fall creates... Gives us an experience. Yeah, it gives us an experience, yeah. I mean, my journey's been 10 years and, I, you know, this is where I get a bit woo-woo, I believe that I signed up for that path, I signed up to learn yeah. that 10-year journey. I know a lot of people, I know I've worked with a lot of people that have gone to rehab in a few months and transformed their life. 
you know, and now they're off doing amazing things all around the world and I still keep in contact. I've got a lot of people that are still battling with addictions for longer than 10 years. So I kind of believe that we kind of come here, you know, and we sign up for a few soul journeys, whatever we want to call it. And like, okay, so I decided to learn about addiction. I had to go through it the hard way to now teach other people. Um, but you I had did, to accept that. That kind yeah, of sounds like yeah, acceptance. Yeah, to totally yeah. accept it. Like, put my hands up. Like, okay, so every time I, I slipped up or I failed or relapsed, in the end, it was like, brilliant, you know, I've got to learn to do it a bit more better next time, you know, keep on going, Brett, you know, the inner guru started talking to me in a positive way, but what I do believe is that we can speed up the transformation by accepting it, by connecting, you know, four keys to connection, connect to yourself, find out who you are, connect to your spirit, you know, really connect to your spirit, connect to other people, help other people, connect to your, connect to your nature, to the universe and, and stuff like that. And, and That's use, nice. Yeah, and using your mind, just using your mind, all I've ever mm. seen in these 10 years is, I've seen this moment right now, I never knew it was going to be you, I never knew it was going to be your interview, but I knew that I would succeed, mm -hmm. you know, so I visualised myself in pure success, I visualised myself in happy happiness. You know? How important and how much of a key were those visualisations to where you're at now? Uh, if I didn't do them, I wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I never, you, people call it quantum leaping, like I said earlier, people call it, you know, visualisation. I just basically close my eyes in the morning and see how I'd like a nice day. But 10 years ago, I closed my eyes and saw how I'd like a nice life. And that was to be clean That's and free. That's interesting, yeah. Yeah. Because you, you talk about visualisations now, and I actually remember a story you were saying um, back in the day, yeah, yeah, <laughs> let's yeah, say, yeah. which was a Wednesday, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah. Um, you were, you know, in, in a car or something like that, you were doing drugs. Yeah, and yeah. And you, you, tell me the story. You, I was just smoking crack, you know, for my sins, um, and just talking to a friend and just listen to this voice that come up and I just said to him, you know, I'd write a book about this one day and I will change my life. And without even realising, I was visualising them, I was listening to my guru, I was connecting to my spirit, you know, a few little things had happened for me to get to that point, but I kind of blurted it out and, uh, you know, when you know when I told him, he laughed, and I, even I laughed. I can't. I can just about spell. I can put a paragraph together. You know, um, but I never give up on that. And then I started picturing myself. So it come. It become a belief, which turned into a deep knowing, which turned into a purpose. Well, you pictured it, and then you spoke yeah, it. Importantly, spoke it, you yeah. spoke it. You said, regardless of how high you were, whatever the situation was, to your mate, you said, you know what, one day. I'm gonna change my life. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna set things right, and I'm gonna write a book about it yeah. and help others. You yeah, know? yeah, totally. And 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 when I realised I knew what I was doing, and there was a law of attraction, and there was a connection, mm. and there was all this stuff. You know, I I done the stuff without realising and understanding what I was doing. So now that I understand all this stuff, I would urge anybody to, if they want to control their life or transform their destiny, they just want to be happier, is to pick up these basic tools, or you know, get on your hands and knees maybe and pray. You know, you don't have to be religious to pray, you know, meditate, you don't have to be a Buddhist to meditate, um, visualise, you don't have to be into law of attraction to visualise, just use the simple techniques. So visualisations have actually brought to fruition where you're at now. Without visualisations, you can say that you wouldn't be where you're at right now. Yeah, 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 in a sense, yeah, because if yeah. it wasn't visualisations and then it would have been a different path and I'd have been doing something else, but my path is visualization. You is, knew it. Yeah, knew it, yeah, and like picturing it. It doesn't have to be an hour a day, it could be one minute in the morning or one minute in the evening. You know, at the moment, I am now 10 years in front. You know, I can see myself where I am, I'm picturing what I'm doing. You know, a few years back, I was like, right, okay, I know I'm writing a book, I know it's gonna be great, you know, I'm gonna do this, Brett, you know, we're clean now, let's go for it. I'd love to be in a movie. Imagine making a movie about my life, you know, and telling people I transformed and you can do it too. You know, sending a message mm -hmm. of hope and inspiration and then Choice Point come up and I was asked to be interviewed for a film. I know it's not all about me, but I'm in a film with some of like, the biggest leaders and change agents of the world and you know, really making a massive difference. What did that do for you? <sighs> not only that, you knew, you knew back then, and by the way, that seems like a, a poetic metaphor for light at the end of the tunnel. Because yeah. you were in that car, you're talking to your mate, you had that moment, you had this knowing, whether you were high or not, you aligned with this purpose of you, you know, coming clean and writing a book on your story and sharing it, and you spoke it. So that was kind of literally like a light at the end of the tunnel, yeah. as it were, a light yeah, in yeah. the dark. Yeah, yeah. Because it was dark back then. And now you're up here, you're in Choice Point. Like you said, there's some names, you're up there, the, Sir Richard Branson is in that film, Greg Braden is in that film. Yeah. All of these leaders of these major um, shifts and changes that are, are shaping the world. Yeah. How did you think it was going to be a film like that? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Sir Richard Branson. <laughs> Desmond 2, Desmond 2, yeah. you know, Jack Canfield. Yeah. Uh, 
What's more crazy is that I've read some of these books and you know, I've known some of these, not known mm. them personally, but yeah. they've inspired me. You know, they've, and I'm just like, wow. And to get into that, I never knew that exactly was going to happen. But I was just mentioning it to you a minute ago. What I believe is if it doesn't work out, if it doesn't happen, then it's not going to, okay, that happened for a reason. Mm. But if you flip your mind to, okay, there's going to be an amazing result because it didn't work. Mm-hmm. You know, whereas always before, every time I messed up, it was always, oh, no, messed up. My mindset was in that way, you know, everything was negative. So now it's like, whatever happens, if it doesn't work, if it if it's going to be a small film or a big film, no matter what, it will be a ten times better result after. Mm-hmm. The next opportunity will be better. The next person you meet will be much better. The next day you wake up to, when you open your eyes, is going to be ten times better than the day you've just had. Because you're kind of living in that moment, living in that experience, and living in... Yeah, living in the now. You're choosing not to focus on the negative yeah. result yeah. of, I missed that opportunity, I missed that chance, yeah. I missed that shot at something that I really wanted to do, not realizing around the corner, you know, those opportunities that were brought to you and maybe not followed through on were just like a carrot, you yeah, know, yeah, and yeah. the rabbit. So yeah, that, yeah. that was getting you to the point of being excited yeah. about the fact that oh, you're going to do an interview, but then the next day you get to do something, you know, more compelling, more powerful, yeah, more... Yeah you know you yeah totally 110 yeah. just always and if you're living in that passion if you're living in that excitement like a child i'm like a child every day is phenomenal but you don't it, say yeah <laughs> <laughs> if, you're living in that, if you're living in that you know a child loves it every moment every day gets better until unfortunately they they kind of get conditioned and just before you know when a child's you watch babies they get up and a brick is just like wow you know if you're living in that wow factor I heard a priest say it once, he said, you know, every day you should be, you should find one wow factor. And if you could live in that wow factor, people will just absorb your energy. People will love to be around you. You don't need to go and find these opportunities. You, your purpose will find you, you know, and I believe that's a lot of inner guru and mindset stuff, mm-hmm. connection and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I never thought the film would be, I never thought I'd be in a film with all them people. But now I look at it, it's like, wow, I was destined for that. I've done, sure, you know, right? I've lived and yeah. breathed it. I've, mm-hmm. I've listened to, to, to the signs and gone for it. So yeah. So you've listened to the signs, and what what are some signs you've listened to? Like as an example, uh, the biggest sign is conflict and fear within me, and then the signs of people that I meet. You know, people that follow through, connections. The connection for me is key. Yesterday, I was talking to a seventy-eight year old man in um, in a cafe. You know, I was waiting for you to come down, and as I was talking to that man, I got just as much as inspiration and messages from him as I would speaking to Richard Branson or Desmond Tutu. To me, everybody is a sign. Everybody is a message, and. Yeah, it's just about it's just about paying attention to that. Right? Everything's a sign. You're crazy. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> everything. everything. Yeah, everything. Um, that's that's chairs and stuff that don't move, you know, or cameras uh, intimidate me. Yeah. But people, you know, people are signs to me. Mm-hmm. You know, we do get. Like, I know you're really into your numbers. You know, you've got a few lucky numbers that you've been sharing with me. Yeah, I'm lucky numbers. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I guess you'd say that. Yeah, we've all got <laughs> yeah. different signs, haven't we? Mm-hmm. You know, we've all got, and that's just mine. People, they they're the signs because I've got my opportunity antennas on, and if I can help, I will. If you can help. I'll ask, mm-hmm. you know. That's perfect because that's so in resonance and I'm, you know, amazed at how it worked out that we connected together. And as you say that, the signs, because I'm being led sort of on my journey through the synchronistic signs yeah, and yeah. the people I meet, the places I go, and I'm not deterred by anything. If yeah. something doesn't work out, I, I say it to people who watch my interviews, like, dude, if this doesn't work out, if I don't get to edit it, I'm not doing it again. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, A, I don't have the technical know-how, and B, I don't even know how to do that. Yeah, you know, yeah, I just yeah. want to upload these things. Um, it's about the message that you're, the exactly. message that you've got, Dan. It's, yeah. it's, it's profound. It's, you yeah. know, if people look at that, it's about listening to what you've got to say, not with your ears, yeah. but with your soul, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. So it's good. It's kind of like a confirmation for me because, like you said, you talked to a 78 year old man at the shop at the co- at the cafe, and um, it had such a profound experience. And and I have those experiences. Yeah. So it's so nice to know that there's a parallel in someone else who's also you know becoming more of who they are, but also who has done major leaps of transformative, yeah. you know, quantum jumps, whatever you want to yeah, call it. Yeah, whatever you want to call it, yeah, yeah. whatever you want to label it, it's just a label, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally, yeah, great. Yeah, so what is, um, th- this film, there's a lot of buzz around it, it's also, um, it's also a book, by the way. Mm-hmm. That's my thing, this is a choice point, it's also um, a book. So the book was written first? Yeah. 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 And did you have anything where you interviewed in the book or? Yeah, and then there's snippets from the interview. So I'm in the book, go through that book, my, which I love. Um, this is where the ego is going to come in now. It talks about uh, life's a journey. Mm-hmm. You know, it just summed me up so nicely. I'm not in my ego, but it just, I was like, wow, life's a journey. And that's just all I've ever said to anyone. You know, if you're in a bad situation, it's a journey, it's a reason. 
you know, and, and to be in the book and, and on underneath it, Life's a Journey, that was just as, as good as being in the film. I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah, well, Brilliant. life is a journey. And yeah, what's my message? Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, when you take Enjoy. that message and actually think about, okay, well, what is a journey? And you, let's say, read a story where a character has a journey. You probably wouldn't read that book if that character didn't come close to death and yeah, yeah. have a heart wrenching experience and yeah, then, yeah. you know go through turmoil and then rise above. Yeah. Those are things that excite us in stories and make us you know want to read on. Yeah. So those are things that make us experience and become better people and walk on. Yeah, totally. And want to you carry I mean? on. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And, and and the beauty of the journey is that you're the creator. You've got the paintbrush. You mm. know. You know. You can. You're the writer. You write your you write your journey. Do you rise up? Do you prevail? Yeah. Will you become you? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's literally yeah, yeah, totally. kind of it's up to you. And it's funny because some people might think that that's kind of like loopy or zany. Because again, what I get um, from from some people that I speak with is that um, it you need to be practical. You know, people tell me most times I need to ground myself or become what's real. And what's real is you've got to get a nine to five job. You've got to work in the system. You've got to pay the money. Yeah. You've got to, you know, go out and have a social life yeah. and engage with social friends and create this image of yourself, this portrayal and function well in society. Yeah. Not to live, but to function well in society. Yeah. And um, what we're realizing more and more with people like you and I and all the great people that are out there is that people are breaking that trend. They're breaking that template and actually creating a new one. Totally, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And the new one is an rigid one. It's the template of unlimitedness. Yeah, unlimited beliefs, unlimited yeah. possibilities, a beautiful world. You know, everyone in that film, that, well, from what I've learned, and myself included, I've stepped out of the box, and they've stepped out of the box, and they've become who they are. And you know, I've become who I was by stepping out of the box from not wanting to be at school. I stepped out of the box from the amount of jobs that I've been in, real good paying jobs as well. And I've decided not to be in them boxes because I didn't believe in the system. I didn't believe in what they're trying to do. It wasn't me. So I stepped out of the box, and I stepped out of the box on being a drug addict and being um, a normal kind of member of the society and the community that I lived in. I didn't want that, so I had to step out of the box. I call it leaps of faith because it sounds better. <laughs> it sounds very leap of faith. Yeah, I just a leap of faith. <laughs> but all I done was stepped outside the box and went against the grain. Mm. I went, and that's all I am still doing. No nine till five. No, I'm not singing anybody else's message. I love everybody's theories, but I'm coming back to me. I'm not trying to wake anybody up. I'm not trying to preach. Right. I'm just being me. But you did the nine to five. You did those dance jobs. Yeah, yeah. And you didn't like it. So what you did was recreated your reality without it. Yeah, totally. And you're living it now. Yeah, yeah, totally. Create so that system go. within. It yeah. can be done. Yeah, totally. People do it all the yeah, time. Yeah, don't take drugs, kids. You know, recreate <laughs> your own system. <laughs> be your own boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I am the best boss I know. Yeah, of course. I'm the happiest boss I know. <laughs> <laughs> Comes great for Christmas bonus time. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Have a holiday, Brett, okay? <laughs> yeah, speaking of holiday, did you, um, in this transformation experience, because it seems like a real contrast to go from dealing to healing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is your book, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Um, Must market in there. Yeah, you. Thank you. <laughs> Always looking out. So, um, did you do any sort of like extreme form of healing? Like, did you go to a temple? Did you try to seek uh, redemption by you know seclusion on a mountain or so something like that? These things that some people also think they have to do. Yeah. Did you do anything anything like that in a spiritual sense? Yeah, totally. Yeah, I, I mean, I, when I, I I used to go to Thailand quite a lot, and unfortunately, you know, for another addiction such as sex, it wasn't the best thing in the world. You know, <laughs> sex was on tap, and you know guilt and there's a lot of disgust that I've had in me that I've had to work on to get through the way I've treated people and myself, especially women. Um, but, but while I was out there, I was praying to monks, you know, going to temples and just asking for guidance. You know, obviously after I took my first, my first kind of choice point in prison. And so yeah, I went to temples, I've lived with monks in temples, I've had some amazing synchronicities and experiences with people from one temple in England to a temple in Thailand yeah. to a temple just around the corner, you know, meeting... I've met priests, I've, I've even confessed, you know, I've done a confession. Again, I'm not religious, I'm, I'm not even Buddhist, you know, but I just I take what works, and if it works, I just go with it. You know, there's loads of principles and practices which are amazing, and I have, yeah, sat there with monks and challenged them. You know, why did the Buddha say that? Why, why should I do that? And they just always come back to me, well, you don't have to. Find that for yourself, yeah. and I'm like, Damn. Yeah. <laughs> So I found out the hard way, and then I come back, go, yeah, okay, I agree. Um, I've been on silent retreats, you know, to really face myself. Um, but then, yeah, I, I did speak to somebody a long time ago from India, and he just said to me, you know, you don't have to go to India to have a spiritual awakening. You don't need to go anywhere else. You just need to go within. And it really resonated with me because my journey began in prison, you know, a really unlikely place for a spiritual awakening, if we want to call it, or a choice point. Um, but it began there. 
And so I never really went out seeking Thailand or seeking these monks. Again, it was just a process that mm-hmm. I, I fell into and went through. Um, I suppose inwardly, that's the, that's the that's the most biggest, bestest temple I've ever been. Is the one inside. Mm-hmm. Well, I was a firm believer in that myself. I mean, I didn't. I wanted to go to. I wanted to go to Bali. I wanted to go to India. I wanted to go to Egypt and these temples and yeah. pyramids. Yeah. I wanted to be around wherever it was in the world. And every time I stepped forward to do something like that, something restricted me. All of a sudden, my funds were zapped. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I was tapped. I just yeah. couldn't, or yeah. I was tied into something else. And so I started realizing. So like that you weren't meant to go there. You weren't. Yeah, I yeah. just wasn't meant to go there, but I. It's because I knew it. I just wasn't facing it within myself. I wanted to go to those places, I guess from the ego perspective or from yeah. the, the material perspective of just going to those places. Yeah, right? yeah. But I, in, inside I knew, I told myself, Daniel, you can do whatever you want. You don't have to go to these places. So now I actually figured that out before I left Canada. I was like, oh, fine, here we go. And then the moment I let go of going anywhere, all of a sudden I landed in England. Yeah. I'm ready to travel the world, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. And, and now I don't have a set agenda. I just hop on wherever Go I'm going, flow. free spirit, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I know I'll get to Bali, India, and you know, see monks and go to Thailand and do all this stuff, but um, it's no longer on that quest or list because, yeah. you know... You come from a different place, aren't you? you come, come from a different yeah, place, totally, you know? Yeah. When, when you're in a state of not knowing or separation or dark, uh, you know, lower vibration, and you're calling out and you're saying, this will help me. You know, a silent retreat will cure me. A cleanse in Bali will, yeah. will, will help me. A detox in, in Thailand will do it for me. Yeah. And it may, but if you go back to wherever you just came from and you don't bring it with you or you can't bring it with you, what's the point of it? Yeah. Wow, I had two months of bliss yeah, or yeah, I had yeah. a couple of weeks of bliss. Then you go back in and you're still in the dysfunctional relationship. You're still in the cycle of Not drug abuse, yet. still gambling addiction, still thought addiction, whatever it is. Um, so the important part is to do it where you're at so that you can have it wherever you go. Yeah, totally. And, and, and I think as you're, as you're mentioning these things like Bali and like for me, like Thailand and monks and that, you know, again, it's just another, not an addiction, but it's another illusion or a distraction from coming away from here. Mm-hmm. You know, I still go to all these amazing places now. It's phenomenal. You know, I get to travel the world and do things that I love. But, you know, I think Tony Robbins says it, he's amazing, you know, he's one of my kind of, you know, motivational coach dudes I listen to. And he says, you know, if you go shopping hungry, you're just going to get a trolley full of junk. So if you're looking for love and you're hungry, (laughs) you're going to probably attract the wrong relationship. If you're looking for spirituality and you're really trying to liberate yourself, but you're coming from a real hungry place, you might go to the wrong temple, you know, and you might have to come back for another few years to learn that that you, you, you don't go hungry, you fulfill yourself inside. So that's brilliant. Yeah, it's amazing. It's not mine. I would love to say it's no. Mine. I know. Yeah. Just, that's brilliant, yeah. Tony. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, taking that and understanding that because you you've got to sort of slap yourself a little silly to to a accept lot. that, a right? Yeah, when, you, when you go hungry, it's yeah. like ah, I want these cookies. It's yeah, like, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. no cookies, no frozen pizza. Yeah. You're here for veggies. You're juicing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah if you're yeah. on that diet, from that path, yeah, totally. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. And the ego, like you said, the ego does take over because these places mm-hmm. look great, and you know and whether we're taking medication or using a technique or traveling the world, humans, <laughs> us people, believe that we need something outside or externally to fill us up or to make us better or to give us an opportunity. Mm-hmm. But I haven't tried. I've just, all I've done, I would suggest is go within. So what does Brett Moran do today? Like, today? What, what, yeah, today. <laughs> well, coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Hot chocolate. What, what do you, yeah, nice. <laughs> what do you do, um, like, do you meditate or do you go within yourself? How, how, how do you do that just kind of like daily? where you're at now okay yeah so again i'll go back to the four keys of connection you know the first key is connecting to yourself so every day i'm connecting to brett you know i might look in the mirror and have a conversation with myself i might talk to my inner guru um, out might, loud out loud yeah out loud what another yeah yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah out loud. That, that's something i bring across yes it's important yeah. it's not crazy it's not yeah, whatever you've got to have a connection with yourself yeah. if you lose that connection with yourself or well, look at my life you take drugs go crazy and you got a long journey to come back on to, you know. So, for young people, and my little daughter, what I always, my my biggest kind of parenting tip is that just to let her be connected to who she is. Yeah. You know, don't get the nine to five, don't get lost, or get it, but don't get lost in it. But just as long as you're always you, Ella, as long as you're always supporting your her in that too. Yeah, totally. Just be yourself. You're beautiful. You know, so why can't I stand up in the morning when I get out of bed and look in the mirror and go, actually, Brett, you know, you're a top fella, you're a beautiful yeah. guy. You know, and it's not every day, but yeah, I might pray. Again, I'm not religious. Mm-hmm. I might get on my hands and knees and just ask for a great day or pray to Dominic, the homeless guy that I met a few weeks yeah. back. You know, I pray for him and his dog, you know, um, or for something really serious that's going on in the world. 
Um, but Brett Moran does not read the paper or listen to any propaganda in the news. Cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, for me, it's poison. You know, again, it just there's no point in infecting my beautiful mind and every cell of my body with negativity. It's like weeding a garden, isn't it? Yeah, you yeah, totally. I mean? Your life is a garden, and you just weed these little things out. Yeah, you don't need weeds in your garden. You no know? way. No there's way. There's nothing wrong with doing it. You can weed out people. You can weed out news, propaganda, yeah, yeah. Uh, negative thoughts, and you'll realize that your garden just starts to become beautiful. It becomes flat for the flowers, and it's just yeah. growing. Yeah. And Meditation. Yeah, you talk about the four keys. The Goals. Four, yeah, four sorry, keys. the four keys. So connecting to yourself, so that'd be meditation, maybe exercising, mm -hmm. um, connecting to to my spirit, so that'd be meditating, um, you know, uh, connecting to other people. I'm the guy that talks to anyone, you know, mm -hmm. homeless people, young people on the street, the angry guy that's shouting at people across the road. It's mad, because I'm sure you Is that what you got the black eye? No, no. <laughs> that was you. <laughs> well, take two. <laughs> No, but you know, I'm sure you attract this, Dan. People just look at you and they're yeah. just, you know, babies and people, you know, I just want to be more You have to engage. Yeah. It's kind of like you have it here and like, like oh, I can't, yeah. I can't, I can't, yeah. I can't, yes. And I do kick myself if I don't engage. I'm like, damn, I wish I said hello. And then yeah, the fourth one is connecting to nature. I'm over, uh, again, mm -hmm. I used to be a drug dealer, a criminal in prison. Now I'm the guy that will go for a nice walk in the park, see a tree and just put my hand on it or give it a cuddle, <laughs> you yeah. know, just connecting and being in harmony with animal nature and, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. So that's what Brett Moran does. Yeah. Sees every day as a gift. Mm. Yeah, mm. it's a gift because it's the present. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So what's um what's next for you? Like, what are you what are you doing with your, your work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. I know. You, Trust me, as an actor, <laughs> I love when people ask me the question. So great, best actor, New York Film Festival. What are you on to next? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Bastards. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't expecting this. But um, I don't mean like what's next as in lined up. What's next? Uh, you say you see yourself in ten years. What are some projected goals? What are the visualizations you're having that maybe by sharing this, people who are watching this can be inspired by, oh, okay, because some people can be held back, Brett, with like this, um, oh, I'm not good enough to attain that. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And underestimating yourself, even when you're using your imagination, is yeah. just, that's a sad thing. It's your imagination. You can you're be president, yeah, be, yeah. you know, a global leader, be a, a celebrity, what, I don't know, whatever it is you want to yeah, be, yeah, a yeah. better parent, a better friend, a better lover. Um, so what are the projected like visualizations that you have just you know yeah just to always be on. yeah always be on this path of transforming always you know I'm a very selfish person and becoming mm -hmm. selfish has allowed me to become selfless so I become number one made a lot of choices that had a lot of effects uh, negative effects sorry uh, con and consequences that weren't great but I knew that I had to do it for me so I had to be selfish and I'd done that and I lost out on some stuff friends family you know, stuff like that, I had to really become selfish in order to become this selfless person to help other people transform. So I will always be selfish. <laughs> you know, if I if something was really going on today in you know this interview and I just say, look, Dan, I can't do it, you know, because that's me coming to, to me, being my truth, speaking my honesty. So that's my overall goal. Um and that's again what I believe to create all the opportunities that come. Mm -hmm. Um but on the physical form, you know, on this world that we live in, uh, to do a film myself, to do a guru, you know, teach people how to be the guru. You know, I've got loads of theories, loads of ideas, of ways to connect. So, um, to build a, a rehab, like a detox in Thailand. Okay. We've got property that we're looking at. Um, it's to, you know, I'm saying what I'm doing now is I'm setting my goals and my intention. You know, I'm making this That's live. Right. You know, I'm putting this out to people, and I want people to make me accountable for it. Now, I know <laughs> that. You know, he said he was. Gonna yeah, he said he was going to do it. Where is it? Yeah, he's just sitting on the beach somewhere. <laughs> but you know, what? you don't even you don't even need that because back in the day, we'll yeah, talk, yeah. Um, when you told everyone that you were going to write this book and you were yeah. going to set yourself straight and yeah, you know, yeah. transform. And you actually did it. Yeah. So I mean, the visualizations, the the speaking of the words, the thinking of the thoughts, that all cements and weaves together that reality for you. It brings it that much closer. Totally. And again, it's like who's to say that that quantum future isn't a reality? I believe it is. It's like we've got to do is tap into it. You've got to tune into it in whatever way you do, whether it's channeling. Buddha, God, Guru, whatever it is that you do, mm -hmm. just keep going for it and channel into it as much as you possibly can. Yeah. Ask him how we got there. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, totally, 100%. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, for me, by talking about it, saying it out loud, it just creates a bigger energy. It puts it into the effort, it puts it out into the universe, and other people will help me tap into it, and it becomes me, just like I did with the book. You know, After I told that one friend, and I thought, wow, it's crazy, a few years later, I was like telling a few more friends, and then people say, well, how's it going? And oh yeah, then I'm getting into the energy of it. So mm. yeah, the rehab um, and Africa. Africa's calling me. 
And it, yeah. you know, there's a massive meaning, there's a massive purpose to do something out there. Yeah, I think there's something going to be going on in Africa. Like, just a lot of people have been hearing Africa. We've been hearing about it a lot lately. Yeah, in the yeah. Media, and people are, you know, setting goals to be there. So yeah, I mean, my goal is just to be able to connect to a, a, a bunch. At the moment, there's a sports tournament. Trying to, I do that because it's like whoa, <laughs> but I'm really trying to manifest. Um, and I've actually got a meeting with a guy Friday, and it's literally just to raise a little bit of money to go and teach a load of young kids how to do some sports, how to fun. And I believe every child deserves them opportunities. Yeah. My little girl always has fun. She gets to play sports at school, and we run around. So you know, I'd like to just go and do that to some young, help some young kids that might not have that opportunity or that. Yeah. yeah, which is yeah. To me, that gets my box. That gets all my boxes ticked. <laughs> Being in a film, writing a book, and that fame. gets my box. Yeah, that, that's that's not. It's amazing. It's important to get a message out, but mm. the real connection with a young kid in Africa or a homeless person mm. that just makes me come alive. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So getting the message out. When when does Choice Point come out? Yeah, uh, June the first. It's out June the first. So if anyone wants a screening anywhere in the world. Um, by all means, email me. Cool. <laughs> My website goes live. You know, I'd love to be a guest, uh, do live questions and answers, or they can set it out themselves. You know, they can go through Choice Point website mm -hmm. um, and they can, you know, get a DVD and screen it. You know, get a message out there. Um, cool. and and a, there's a movement online that they can join um, yeah and then my website will be there transformationguru-guru.com yeah. and they can get some free stuff and see what I'm all about see my goals <laughs> see my visions on, on, uh, online as well I've, yeah. I've set them movie Thailand and Africa because I want I want to cool. create that yeah we'll make sure all those links are in the bottom of this interview cool and, yeah. Uh, yeah I mean thanks for chatting man <laughs> <laughs> thank you that's amazing man <laughs> It's been an uh, awesome connection. Um, England has been amazing so far. We meet people like Brett um, all over, all around, and I'm really excited to keep my journey going. So thanks for watching my one-to-one -one chat with Brett Moran. Choice Point, the movie he's in, also featuring, let me pitch this a little more. Yeah. Choice Point, it's a book, it's a film, it's a movement. <laughs> cool, you know, good uh, pitch. Yeah, no worries. Uh, let's name drop as well. You see like Sir Richard Branson in there, Greg Brayton. Desmond Tutu, Desmond Jack Tutu. Canfield. Yeah, so there's a lot. I mean, these people are um, the the trendsetters or the wave leaders, the the Change people on um, yeah, the cutting edgers of of this shift that we're all working towards and uh, experiencing now. So I'm looking forward to seeing uh, where I'm going to be next time I chat with someone. Uh, thanks for tuning in. One to one, one love. Um, it's cool. Yeah, it's cool. Remember, we need a water break. What were you talking about? Um, no. Visualising, making sure oh, okay, you do yeah. techniques and go for it, you know. I was going to get to what you can create you know, in the last few years, it's being creating the film, stuff like that, you know. Yeah, okay. And action. Thank you. Say. I always want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, visual. Mara, bravo! Guru! <laughs> We're gonna use that. I thought so, so I carried on. <laughs>